Hi and welcome everyone. My name is James Fitzpatrick. I'm General Manager for Membership at the APA. Um, welcome to PBA National Committee and State Chapters. Um, this is the first of a monthly video series that we thought we might film for PBA volunteers so that you can get a better picture of what's happening in the APA and around the PBA. Um, so I've made this short video because I've just come from a meeting with Darren Newman and Scott Willis, your outgoing National Chair and incoming Chair. And Jenny Thompson and with Chris Massis, the CEO of the APA, thought I'd share with you some of the outcomes of that meeting um, to give everyone a broader understanding of uh, what that discussion looked like. Um, the first part of the discussion was around the APA strategic plan. We're finishing a three-year strategic plan and everyone would be aware of the voice value knowledge pillars that uh, we've been operating on for the last three years. Uh, and there was a lot of talk between Darren and Scott and Chris about the PBA involvement in formation of the new strategic plan. The boards had a look at a draft uh, at their December board meeting and uh, it's taking shape as a framework. Um, looks like we will have four new pillars for next year. Um, certainly our number one pillar is going to be around the voice activity, um, recognition and feedback from the entities around the voice pillar and our advocacy and lobbying work that needs to take a higher focus and priority within the APA. Um, second pillar is on quality uh, and I'll make another video about what the quality pillar looks like um, but certainly all the parts of accreditation and learning and development and um, those components will fit into the, the quality pillar. And our third pillar is going to be around the consumer focus and you would have noticed a lot of consumer activity in the last 18 months that uh, the board's intention is to pursue a higher level of consumer engagement in the, over the coming year. And fourth and final pillar will be around the capability, capability, capability and delivery of, uh, for the APA and its entities. Um, we really branched into a discussion about how to get the PBA involved in that strategic plan, about the formation of the plan. Um, really good discussion, really open that the CEO really encouraging the PBA when the draft comes out to um, really apply that across private practice and make sure that our strategic plan is going to meet the needs of the private practitioners going forward. So really open invitation from the CEO. Um, we talked about communication in general with the CEO, with Chris Massis, about uh, how do we take the really varied range of activities that the APA is doing and put it in a precise and concise format that the PBA can filter and get out to their state chapters and to work through together. Um, hence, you know, we're going to do a lot more video technology, uh, video conferencing. You know, the, there's a fair few things on our list that we feel like we've taken some steps to improve communication. I think we've got a bit of a way to go. Um, most, I'm, I've tipped the, put the next part of the discussion under advocacy, one heading called advocacy in this voice pillar. Because we spent a lot of time talking around what some of our current problems were, our challenges and our barriers. Um, some of the things that have gone well for us, um, we've put them into short term and long term as uh, two discussion points. Um, in the short term, we recognise that, well, the board, re so the short term is the board recognises that advocacy is going to be the number one pillar. The challenge for the organisation is how we're going to resource that into 2015 and what does it look like for the APA. For So that will be Chris Massis's challenge of how does he resource advocacy so that we can get the deliverables that we want for the membership. We need we know we need to do a current stock take of advocacy. Uh, there'll probably be 30 or 40 or 50 items on the advocacy list across every national group and across and nationally. Um, we need better visibility of that and our advocacy team in the short term has committed to, to doing a priorities list, do a stock take of advocacy items, do a priority list and release that to the membership. One exists internally but it's actually not shared externally with our entity so that's probably what the CEO is going to be looking for is uh, so that you can see what our advocacy team's priorities are where our effort and time, effort and the reason why that effort's going there and something like the opportunity for prescribing rights at the moment with the health ministers in agreement around the HPPP and our huge push towards prescribing rights um, is because the window for change is here and there is a gateway or a, a, a consent process that um, we're able, we think we're going to be able to achieve a great result for the profession in a really short period of time. 
um, much more transparencies from entity to entity so that um, all national groups can see what the other national groups are working on in the voice space. Um, we talked around um, the branching out into the allied health space um, as an association we you know the allied health prof professionals Australia um, our move on to a number of boards and a representation on a number of committees in the allied health space that we probably retreated from from a couple of years for a couple of years but certainly heading back into that space um, but I think the the main thing and my message is that that clarity in the short term around what are the priorities, what are we working on, and in what order, and what aren't we working on. I think that'll really help you as a PBA committee um, with some transparency. In the long term, we talked about um, it was a little bit more philosophical about advocacy and the PBA, and where do we want your advice and guidance, and the discussion centred around. Um, how do we give feedback to the CEO? How do we give feedback to the uh, the advocacy division and the board? And how do you make change and, and tell the organisation what your priorities are? Um, we talked about a number of ways and vehicles that that might happen. Um, there, you know, from advocacy uh, advocacy advice panels, PBA, you know, capturing their thoughts about. Um, the priorities and, and matching that into the advocacy team. We didn't quite come up with a fix for that at the moment as a definitive path to release, but certainly I know Darren and Scott and Chris Massis were all on the same page around gathering your thoughts, channeling them into the documentation and giving feedback on where we we're at with those. Um, certainly something that the CEO is really keen to pursue around what does that feedback channel look like we talked about um, NAC and the changing role of NAC and whether that is a vehicle for the PBA to work through. Certainly we, we want to have a big voice from the PBA at NAC um, and want to lead the private, sector, the private sector at NAC. Um, but there was a lot of recognition around, um, especially from Darren Newman, around the previous work we've done on PHI um, we've had really good airtime at NAC and feel like that NAC's been a vehicle that's been well used for us and we'll just continue to use it. Um, in the long term, we talked about resourcing concerns for advocacy. Um, that list of 30, 40, 50 items all requires work from what is three and a half staff in our advocacy unit. We talked a lot about that, about what, what the actual staffing resource mix should look like. Um, should it should it be a mix that's only based in Melbourne or should it be actually based in other states? Should we have a lobbyist in Canberra? We really explored a, a huge range of issues that Chris Massis has taken on board and will certainly feed into his staff restructuring if we, uh, in the new year. He'll, we'll need to go through a process where our staff align, aligns to the strategic plan um, and he's taken on board all those those thoughts about advisory panels, lobbyists, number of advocacy staff, um, with a big recognition that our current staff that we have of three and a half cannot possibly cover the degree of advocacy that's required on a national basis and on a state jurisdiction, um, but acknowledges that the work that we've done so far has been great, but the expectation of the membership is they actually want more. There was a... Um, a piece of work that we wanted to do around that we talked about, and I'll put this under the, the heading of uh, where to from here for PBA services. Um, the board and the CEO have agreed to contribute some more funding towards in practice 2025 so that the APA can reform the working party that worked on in practice 2025 and actually come up with a set of guidelines for APA around what do APA services look like in 2025? Um, that the in practice 2025 certainly covered what does the profession look like in 2025 and what its barriers and challenges were, but it stopped short of saying that this is the APA's definitive position about what our services must be. So we actually plan in February to kick off some to re kick off some workshops and focus groups around um, APA and the private practice 
what that will look like. Um, really excited to re-engage NAUS Group again to do that facilitation work for us. Um, really pleased that the CEO and the board have funded that. So I think that'll be a really big piece for the PBA. Um, it'll actually redefine what your commercial services should look like and we can start to work on a work plan about commercial services um, and all the, the myriad of other stuff that were from the challenges that were in, in practice 2025. So uh, my summary of the meeting, um, I think Darren and Scott and Chris Masses walked out together really on the same page. Um, we, we want some really clear definition of what do we want from the, what does the board want from PBA? What does the PBA want from the board? Um, an investment into some re, into some facilitation to actually get that clearer on the page. And I think that will help um, as PBA volunteers. It's going to help you know what are the projects we want your input in and your work should be working on. What are the projects that the actual t other advocacy team, as an example, are happy to work along on on their own? Um, and what commercial services should we drive? Are there services to drop off? Are there new ones to bring on? so that we can actually align our services with what your practices need for the future. So um, that's me signing off for the first of the monthlies and um, thank you for watching and we'll talk soon. Regards.